Justin Phil from Trail Talk here, and today we're going to be taking a look at the 2022 Giant Bikes mountain bike lineup. All right, so let's jump into it. So starting off, we'll go on to the Giant Trance that was just released. I know a lot of you want to hear my thoughts about that. So there's two main ones. You got the Carbon as well as the Alloy. So there's only one Alloy model. And then there's a few more models in the Carbon. But this is Australia as well, so things might be a little bit different overseas. But looking at the Australian website here, so price-wise, you're looking at $4,500, around $4,600. So for that, a little bit on the expensive side, as we said, compared to that Polygon Siski T8, the price is a little bit more on this, but you do get a few nicer things in terms of spec, a few odd things that are a little bit better. But in the trance, obviously, there's things a little bit different here as well. So let's take a look um, at the alloy first, and then we'll get into the carbon. So Main difference that you're going to notice from the old model, so looking down at the geometry, um, so obviously it's got the longest slacker, all that kind of treatment as well. Um, so the mate, the old one was, a, was kind of more of that kind of like shorter travel trail bike that was really agile, really fast, kind of in that more down country kind of realm, but they've kind of beefed it up a lot. So you look at the frame compared to the old one, it's definitely beefed up a fair bit. So it is pushing the limits now. It's going to be, a proper trail bike so that do it all trail bike that can do actually some pretty decent descents as well so you've got a flip chip um but looking at the size large here so we'll go in the low settings um i'd probably personally ride in the high the bb looks very low the bottom back of drop is 45 um so i'd probably stick to the high but if i am going to kind of more of a place where i'll be descending a bit more probably um the low settings probably a bit better there but 65.5 degree head angle in that low setting um, 76.3 degree seat angles. So great to see Giant continuing the trend going with the steeper seat angles. The criticism of the old one did have a decently slack seat angle. So around 74 and a half, I believe. So it's good to see that they've steepened that up a little bit. 439 chain stays in that low. So kind of on that moderate to longer side. Um, so a bit more versatile, not the shortest, which I kind of like on a trail bike. I want something a little bit more fun, but I think 439 will do the job pretty well. And then the reach, um, 472 and then 480 in the high. So really nice roomy reach there. Not over the top. Some bikes getting super crazy. I think kind of around that 470 to 480 in the size large is what you really want these days. So wheelbase, yeah, you're looking at around 1220, which is very similar to that Siskiyou T as well. So it's going to be a great versatile bike. So looking at the specs, so in terms of what you're getting with the frame, so it was 120 millimeters of rear travel and then 130 up front. So with that geometry, with that kind of numbers, it's going to be, as I said, a great do-it-all bike. And you can actually push this on some pretty decent descents. So it's getting pretty capable these days. The Trance X and the Trance are getting pretty close in terms of geometry. So I think the Trance is going to be for someone who likes a little bit more of an efficient bike, likes to have a bit more fun, whereas the Trance X is going to be for someone who's starting to do a bit more climbs just for descents, who really wants to push the descents a bit more and isn't necessarily worried too much about how the bike performs or the coolant kind of more flowy flatter trails um so for me personally i think the trance is probably my kind of style of bike but if you are pushing the descents i think the trance x is a pretty good option as that's getting pretty close to the rain 29 as well so the spec on this one fox 34 dps um then you got slx and then brakes you get the shimano mt520 so there's four pistons there so i really like those brakes they're some of my favorite ones i did a review on them in the past and probably my favorite budget four piston brakes on the market the feel that you get from them is really good um and then maxis medium up front um with three c max Sarah, so good to see that aggressive in the rear in the dual compound um so not my favorite tire but it's a good fast rolling tire so good options there so as the tires there you can probably tell it's going to be a pretty capable bike on the descents so overall pretty good package i like the spec that they've gone on it a little bit more expensive but i still think, think it's a great value bike so i'm going to give that a good value there so pretty decent but we can also take a look at the carbon model as well so as you can see giant has really stepped things up in the last year or so with their bikes um just really pushing in terms of geometry they were very conservative in the past and then they're just starting to be take a little bit more risk with a few different things so expect but as you see here going on the trend from specialized as well as trek you're getting some frame storage here as well so 
you can see that we'll go on the entry level advanced pro model so this is good carbon build here and this would probably be if you're looking for value this is probably the best one of the bunch um there's also the pro one which you're getting a little bit better specs so you're getting a piggyback there with the live valve um so if you do want to spend that extra money and you do like the live valve um i think it will make this bike probably a little bit better on those kind of more flowy trails but Again, it's another electric thing, so I don't know how everyone feels about that. But if you're looking at a great live valve bike, that's probably the best one on the market if you're looking for value there. Um, but yeah, decent build, pretty similar to the um, entry-level build on the alloy with this one, but again, that carbon frame. So pretty nice. Um, I think with the wheels, you're getting carbon wheels as well. So that's pretty impressive at that price point that you're getting carbon wheels. Um, this one, I believe you're just getting the alloy wheels from... Yeah, so you're just getting the alloy wheels. So, yeah, I think I think it's a great bike. I think it's going to be a really good bike for Australia. And then for someone who does a little trail riding, you'll be able to do some enduro stuff on it as well. I think it's going to be a great all-round bike. Um, so moving on to the Trans X now. So we'll jump in here. So starting with the alloy again. So this one was updated last year. Um, so entry-level builds a little bit more expensive than on that Trans uh on the trans 29 the shorter travel one it's been a little bit extra but you're getting that fox float 36 so that's going to be a little bit more expensive there um, but everything else is pretty similar if we jump into the main spec so again dps still brakes mt5 let's see that's brake levers mt520 so other than that pretty similar kind of stuff um there so you're getting 135 millimeters of rear travel and then 150 up front so as i said going to be a little bit more capable for people pushing their descents um but yeah the head tube angles again pretty much the same as the um the uh normal trance model so 65.5 um and then 66.2 so it's not too different there it wouldn't surprise me if it's pretty similar frame just they've done a few little tweaks but the wheelbase is a little bit longer um, just mainly from the reach. So the reach is a little bit longer there um, as well. So going to be a little bit more stable at speed um, for those people who start to push the descents a little bit more. So we'll probably push that one. Going to give that again, kind of like in between good average kind of value. It's better when you start going up to the carbon builds where you're getting a little bit better spec for the money. I think it's going to be the best, but um, I think for this entry level build here, you do get that Rock Shocks 35 gold, so I'm not a huge fan of that, um, especially for the price. That kind of 4,199 would like to see something like the Rock Shocks Revelation, um, not something with the cheaper damper and stuff like that. So, if I would recommend spending a little bit extra to get the Trans uh, X29 one, but we'll go into the carbon builds and again live valve options here as well. So the Trans Advanced. Uh, Pro one, I think that's going to be a good option for someone who wants that live valve. Um, but I'm probably a better fan of this one. But you are getting a float rhythm, but you're still only getting that DPS in the rear. So at that price point, it would be nice to see something with a piggyback there, something like the DPX2. But again, carbon wheels as well. So if you like that kind of stuff, it's going to be a good option. But I think the alloy builds are my pick of the bunch when it comes to the Giants. Um, that top level alloy build is the one that I would go for. So we've also got the Anthem Advance, which just came out this year as well. So this is another XC. And then there's also a down country option as well. So something with a little bit uh, extra. Sorry, I could be wrong there. No, it's just, I think it could just be the one. I can't remember off the top of my head, but yeah, it is, it is pushing on towards that more down country kind of option of bike. So you're getting a, it's a flex day, so it's not the maestro suspension there. So that's something to note. Um, a lot of brands are going flex days on their XC bikes. Um, but the XC bikes are getting a lot more capable these days. So the entry-level build is around 6699 for a carbon frame. 34, probably the 34 step cast yet. So a little bit lighter there. Um, seat posts, getting a dropper posts, uh, SLX drivetrain. So decent build there. You're getting remote lockouts. Um I believe as well. Yep. So yeah, I think that's carbon wheels as well for a carbon bike. That's update with all the trends and stuff like that. I don't think that's too bad of a price, especially from a bike shop brand. 
Um, looking at the geometry, so size large, we're getting a 470 reach, stack 600, wheelbase 1,100, so 1 1.183, then 67.5 head angle. So I think it's going to be a great all-round kind of XE bike marathon for someone looking for more of a downcountry bike as well that's a little bit more efficient but can still get some speeds up there, start tackling some decent descents as well. I think it's going to be a good option. Um, so let's jump in to uh, another bike now. So we'll jump into the stance now. And stance, if I'm being honest, probably not my favorite bike in the giant lineup. It's kind of you kind of $2,899. Yes, you're getting a dropper post. You're getting a one-by drivetrain. Um, so it is going to be a good entry-level dual suspension. But it's kind of definitely, if I want a dual suspension, I want something that I can kind of build up and upgrade on. But you are very limited with that through axle on the rear. Um, I want to start, if I'm getting dual suspension, I want to start building up and start pushing the descents. Um, I feel like a quick release rear axle should really be reserved for kind of your more entry level um, trail hardtails, beginner XC hardtails. So there is going to be a definite ceiling on this bike. So if you're forking out that much, you might as well spend a little bit extra. I mean, you can get the Siskiyou T7 and stuff like that for a similar kind of price. So not my favorite bike, but the spec isn't too bad. The Giant Crest 34 isn't a bad fork. Heard good things about that. Um, one by drivetrain and all that kind of stuff like that. But yeah, not my favorite bike. Um, I would definitely recommend getting something like the Vetus Mythique. Polygon Siskiyou D or the Siskiyou T7. Um, I think there's probably a better, um, a few better bikes in that kind of price range. So if we're going to give that one, I think it's kind of getting towards the mare kind of average. Not my favorite bike in the lineup. Specs not bad for the money, but the frame could be definitely a little bit better. So moving on now, we've got the rain. So the rain is their enduro bike. So there's the normal rain um actually they might have ditched that actually we missed the normal the trance 27.5 didn't we the new trance there was another trance that just the normal trance x i'm sorry we missed this one um so the 27.5 inch trance was definitely getting pretty dated now um so it's good to see that they've actually made a new trance which i think for a 27.5 inch bike i think this kind of like all mountain thing where you want to start you like having a bit of fun do some jumps um what a nice playful bike i think it is kind of like a good range in this kind of all mountain realm to have a 27.5 inch bike and then maybe for a few other brand um a few other brands also have it for an enduro as well um but more of a play bike i think that's what i like to think of them so it's pretty similar prices so you got the yari rc so it's a 145 mil travel in the rear 160 up front so it's a pretty damn capable bike for especially in australia you could probably race this in an enduro bike um we don't necessarily have the biggest descent so i think it's a good option but being up to date with all the trends you've got bottom out there then you've got an accessory mount there as well dior so you got that yari dps pretty decent spec for the money um not the best out on the market but i still think that's pretty good and you're getting some good tires on there as well which is good to see so Asagai 3C Max Terra, um, 2.6 inch tires, uh, DHR in the rear. So not too bad. I think if you're looking for a good fun bike for a 27.5, I think this is probably one of the better ones on the market uh, along with the Spectral as well. Those are the two main ones that I probably recommend if you're looking for a great do-it-all 27.5 inch bike. Um, so let's go into the rain. Um, I did miss that one. Uh, we'll go into... So you've got the SX, which is kind of like the beefed up LA model. And then you've got the normal entry level rain. I like to think the rain is the SX is always like that privateers build. So LA frame, but you're getting beefy spec. So it's always going to be a great value option. If you're looking for something that you pretty much want to race enduro on, or you just want a really bulletproof rugged bike, they kind of beef up these SX models and they're definitely worth it. So you usually get an extra 10 mil travel on the front. So you've got 170 there, Fox 38 performance elite. Um, shock dhx2 performance elite as well you're getting nx eagle so again with these bikes not the best drive train especially on these more privateer builds you notice that they kind of like go on the cheap end on the drive train but really beef up the suspension the tires the brakes and get you all that good stuff so brakes you're also getting uh slx there uh so i think this is a great build this is probably my pick of the bunch especially if you're going to be racing enduro 
I think this is probably the one to go for unless you can afford the carbon and stuff like that. The entry level model is still good, but you are getting just that normal inline shock there. So no piggyback again, the Yari. So it's a good upgradable package that you can probably build on. So if this is kind of your price range, I think it's a good option. Not necessarily the best, but I still think it's a great value option. So if you're looking for an enduro bike that's going to be a little bit more efficient than other enduro bikes, got a little bit less travel. Um, so it's going to be a little bit more responsive, better through pumping through terrain and stuff like that. I think the range is a good option there. The sizing is a little bit weird. So you might be in between sizes, especially going from the medium to the large. I've found that there's a big difference. So we're looking 451 reach on the medium and then 488 on the large. So if you're kind of around that 510 realm, 511, you might find yourself a little bit in between sizing. So I definitely recommend going to a bike shop and with Giant, you can do that. Try both sizes out and see how you feel. But yeah, pretty decent geometry. Otherwise, they're getting 64.6 degree head angle, steep 76.4 degree uh, seat angle there as well. So I think it's a good option. If you're looking for a great value bike shop uh, brand bike from a Jira perspective, definitely get the Rain SX, Rain 29 if you're looking to build an upgrade on. But if you're looking for out and out good value carbon bikes, probably if you're looking for killer top line spec at good price, that Rain Events Pro is probably the one to go for. The Rain Events Pro, only getting an inline shock at that price. You do get the Zeb, which is nice, but it would be nice to see a piggyback shock at that price range there. Kind of a bit of a miss there, but yeah, all around, it's going to give that one good value. I think it's a great value option if you're looking for a bike shop brand enduro bike. So that's most of the dual suspension bikes. Um, those are all last year's models. Um, so we'll go into some hardtails now. Won't spend too much time on the more entry. Sorry, I won't spend too much more time on the race bikes. I'll spend a lot more time on the Fathom because I think this is one of the best value hardtails on the market for this year. If you're looking for a great value trail hardtail, I think this is an absolute steal at this price point. So $1,600 boost front and rear axles. You're getting that giant Crest 34 fork. Um, and some other good options here. So plenty of bottle mounts and accessory mounts. It's going to be super versatile. Drop a post, one by drivetrain, as I said. Um, you're getting 130 millimeters of travel. But what's really impressive as well, you're getting good geometry um, as well. So let's take a look. 66 head angle, 75 degree seat angle, the reach, 470. It's bang up to date with all the trends that you want at a great price. Um, so I think this one definitely blows the specialized fuse that we looked at yesterday. Um, I think this, the Merida Big Trail, those are the two ones that really stand out to me this year if you're looking for a great value bike um, in terms of a hardtail. So I would definitely not miss this one. Drivetrain's good too. Shimano M4100. Um, it's a 10-speed 11 to 46 tooth. Plenty of range there, especially for a hardtail. And it's a bulletproof drivetrain. Going to be easy to change the chain as well. It's a cheap chain. Keep on date with the cassettes as well. The cassettes aren't too expensive. Just a great package. So... Yeah, that one, pushing on towards amazing value there. I'm really impressed with this bike. So Giant's done a great job with this one. Giant's just really done a lot of good things in the past two years. They've done heaps of, I mean, they were very conservative in the past. They've taken a few decent leaps there. The value's pretty good too. Hasn't gone too much, too crazy with the pandemic side of things like that. Um, but yeah, I think it's. I think there's got some great bikes out on the market at the moment. We'll jump and look at the talent as well because this is a lot more of an entry-level bike that a lot of people look at. Um, kind of at, a, at that 1,149 price point. So you are getting that one by drivetrain, but it's very much still an XC bike. So looking closer at that geometry, 68.5 degree head angle. So on the 29ers, you're getting, on the larger sizes, you're getting the 29ers. So still very much an XC style of bike. Uh, the reach is still on the shorter side too. So 439 on that size large. So it's a little bit behind the eight ball, but again, it's more of an XC bike. It's not a trail bike. You'd want to get the Fathom if you're looking for that. But I do like seeing on a lot of entry-level bikes, like say that Marin Bobcat Trail, it's got some more progressive geometry that allows you to really progress as a beginner um, and kind of upgrade as you, as you go. Whereas this is definitely ceiling that you'd have to spend an upgrade to a new bike if you're kind of wanting to start pushing it. So that's pretty much the main things. Other than that, you get, again, the talent, the entry-level ones are going to be more of your kind of typical bike path, leisure, fire trail, smoother single track. So just really 
determined spec wise between those ones because the geometry is very similar to all those bikes on the market. Um, so not too much to look at there. Um, won't look too much into the um, XTCs um, because they're very much XC race bikes, but we'll just take a quick look at them just so we can get a good gauge on comparing it to the specialized that we looked at yesterday. So geometry wise, so definitely a very much a racy XC bike. So 70 degree head angle reach 453. So not too bad on an XC bike. Um, but yeah, it's very much 80 millimeter stem. It's a full on XC race bike. So you'd have to really dig into, if you're really doing marathon stuff and you're not pushing the descents too hard, it's very much a very specific market for these kind of bikes. I'd only really recommend these bikes if you're racing uh, XC. Uh, so we'll just quickly look at the electric bikes before we jump into the questions. Uh, we've got a few questions to kind of go through. Uh, so we won't look at the stash stance because that's again, probably not necessarily my favorite bikes in the lineup, but we'll look at the rain E and then we'll look at the trans X E. So with the giants, not too bad spec for the money. They're the only brand main brand to be using a different motor. So they're using the Yamaha system, which I've heard very good things about in terms of reliability. If you're looking for just, if you aren't too fussed about everything else and you just want a reliable motor, I think the Yamaha is the best on the market. Every other motor, I've heard a lot of issues with a lot of people getting warranties and stuff like that. With the Yamaha, I've very rarely heard anyone having issues with the motor. And this has been backed up by a few bike shops that I've talked to as well that deal with Giants. So if you're looking for a reliable e-bike, I think it's probably the best one on the market. But the chainstays are a little bit longer than all the other bikes on the market, which is good if you're doing very fast trails or... You're just looking for out and out stability, but you're still looking even on this rainy, which is the shortest one. It's still around about 454. So slightly on the longer side, it is getting shorter. They used to be around 480 ish um, on the trans X. It's still around 474, I believe around 470. So still on the longer side, but this rainy isn't too bad. 454 is not the worst. Um, so it's still very much usable and kind of getting around corners get it with those longer ones you are pushing it towards where it's getting a bit bussy they are heavier bikes so it's definitely harder to get them around the corners but other than that i think it's a pretty good roaring package deep seat angle 70 you got flip chips so 63.7 degree head angle on the low 64.5 so decent head angle there roomy reaches 475 480 um so all in all good all-around bike nice steep stack there i like to see that too especially on e-bikes a lot more people just want to be comfortable um, so 640, 645 and 641 on that size large. I like to see that. So all in all, short cranks too. I think it's a good all-around package. E-bikes, they're expensive, but I think if you're looking for a reliable, fast e-bike, it's probably one to look at if you're looking at an e-bike. Um, but pricing, pretty much on the pretty standard for e-bikes, you are looking to spend a bit more. But I won't spend too much more time on it. We'll just take a quick look at the Trans XE, so a little bit less travel um, than the rain. You're getting 150 um, up front. And then in the rear, you're getting, we'll just double check this. Oh, we need to click on one of the models. Um, so a little bit steeper price to get in at the entry level price point, but the entry level one does have live valve, um, which I mean, for an e-bike, I'm not too fussed on. I don't think I would really want live valve. Um, you're getting the assistance, so I don't think you really need it. Um, so a little bit steeper see, um, steeper head tube angle. Um, then the chain stays, as I said, 473, so a little bit longer. And then the reach is pretty similar as well. So if you're looking for something a little bit more efficient, a little bit more playful in the sense of you'll be able to push it through corners a little bit easier, 140 in the rear, 150 up front. So it will be a little bit more playful and popping in that sense, but I probably would just get the rainy. Um, the shorter chain stays, to me, make the bigger difference um, on these kind of bikes. But yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, we'll give those a rating, kind of good, kind of average, probably more on the good side. Um, but that's pretty much it on those. Let's get answering some questions. If I missed any bikes, let me know. Um, but we'll get into the questions. Uh, so bro, Jake, haven't seen you in ages. Good to see you around. Long sea tube. Yeah, sea tubes are still slightly on the longer side, I believe. Let's take a quick look back. Um, 
on the trances. So look at the trans X. I believe they're still kind of around about 470-ish. Uh, see it cheap, 465, so it's still very much a classic kind of large. Um, a lot of brands are going kind of like 430, 440 these days, so might be harder for shorter shorter people to fit a longer drop run. For me, I could probably fit like a 170 and still be pretty comfortable. Um, uh, Henry says he's got the 2020 Rain SX. Awesome. Yeah, I think they're, the SXs are a good build. Um, Killer B asks, can I do Norco soon? Yeah, we'll get into Norco. I think we're doing Common Cell next. I think that's what I said the other day. Um, Isaac has thoughts, thought the 35 replaced the Revelation or is it still? I believe the Rele I believe the Revelation still around because the Revelation is, so the 35 uses the cheaper, so the old school, old school motion control damper where the Revelation used the more modern version of that and you get the debonair. Um, and then the Pikes uses the charger damper. Um, so the Revelation, I, the Revelation is very much comparable to the Yari, just slightly, not as stiff as slightly lighter. So essentially a Pike is a beefed up Revelation. Sorry, a Pike is a Revelation with a charger damper, whereas the uh, Yari is... The Lyric has the Charger Damper, whereas the Yari doesn't. Um, so they're pretty much comparable in that sense. Um, but yeah, I've noticed there's a lot more 35s on the market at the moment. Uh, Z-Dog said he's used the rain around the North Shore and was good. Yeah, I think the, the rains are pretty good in terms of the rear suspension. I like the rear suspension on the Giants. It's nice and nice and active over the chunky stuff. Um, Elliot's got the Trance 29 too. Awesome. Uh, Nasir put a deposit down on the Fathom 2. Awesome. I think that's a great choice there. Um, Catlaps, it's scary going back in his old Talon. Yeah, I don't know how. I went back on a hardtail. So one of the old school XC hardtails that I had, I had a, I think a specialized pitch was my first hardtail I had and it was so sketchy. But that's why I was like, when I did my Marin Bobcat trail review, I was like, oh, I really didn't want to jump back on a hardtail because I had that in my head. But it was actually, I think if you've got a hardtail with decent geometry and also um, a good cockpit as well, so short stem wide bars, it makes a big difference. Um, also having the saddle down makes a big difference too. Um, spinning wheels, yeah, you can relate to that as well. I think uh, everyone feels the same kind of way. Um, Gonzo says he's got his 2021 Giant Rain 29, um, but not too many. Yeah, that, notice they haven't been doing too many reviews. I feel like Giant... Can probably get away not doing as many reviews as they probably used to because i think everyone just knows the giant name now they can just do a press release and not worry too much about it but i think the rain 29 is a good bike you just need to make sure you get the sizing right with that bike um but yeah other than that if you've got any other questions send them through otherwise we'll end the stream we're getting towards that 30 minute mic that i like to keep them to just smash them out um but i'm pretty impressed with the giants lineup for this year um they've done some really good things uh yeah, the prices could come down just a little bit, but I think also with everything that's going on at the moment, the prices, it's more expensive to manufacture bikes, get the bikes, also ship them around the world. I can understand why the prices have gone up a little bit, but other than that, compared to other bike shop brands, I don't think you can go wrong. Giants always make good good frames. The alloy frames are really good, really lightweight compared to a lot of other alloy bikes on the market. Um, and Giant being a manufacturer, um, they can definitely... They know their way around making the frames and stuff like that. So if you aren't too familiar, like the two big factories in Taiwan, like you've got Giant, which make a lot of other brands, and then you've got the Merida factory. So Merida is tied to specialized side of things. And then also Giant's making a lot of Trek bikes and then a few other brands as well. Um, and then also some, you've got stuff like Polygon who makes um, Marin bikes and a few other ones too, which are in Indonesia instead of Taiwan. So there's a few big factories around Taiwan that make a lot of, of the brands that you're kind of familiar with. So it's not all, not every brand has their own factory. Um, especially with carbon, their carbon's all over the shop. Like um, a lot of it is from China as well. So they're getting it shipped over there. Um, PQYRZ says, who makes the cheapest entry-level hardtail with boost? Um, I would say the cheapest one that I've seen on the market at the moment is the entry-level Merida Big Trail. Um, that's probably the cheapest one that I've seen 
on the market at the moment. Or it would probably be either the Vita Summit might be one of them as well. Um, just let me double check with that, Marita, though. I could be wrong. So for I think it might be, but have to look into it, dig into it a bit more, but I believe it is. Um, so that one is around 1200 Australian dollars. And then there would probably be the Vetus Santier as well might be up there in terms of that too. We'll jump and get that one as well. So the Vetus is, do, do, do. so the Vetus is around 1500 Australian dollars. So yeah, I would say it is that Marita big trail. Um, ZDoc ordered the 661 reset MIPS. I think I hope it's decent. Yeah, I think I'm sure it will be decent. Uh, Big Hippo asked, will I do Canyon? Definitely will. Um, yeah, Marita Big Trail um, and Vetus would probably be the cheapest ones that I've seen. Um, so I'll probably do the Canyons after I do Commonsar. We'll do that. How about that? So and then after that, I'll probably do Trek. So that covers most of the main brands. Um, but yeah, other than that, I think we'll pretty much end it here. Um, thanks for tuning in again. Um, we'll continue with it. I might do a few odd ones pre-recorded because uh, things might uh, change just throughout the week. Sometimes it's easy just to do it quickly pre-ordered, but I might do getting closer to Christmas. I might do a, just a Q and a stream kind of towards the end of the week. So you, everyone can kind of recap because I am traveling down to Sydney. So I might have to do a recap. So I might have to do a pre-recorded one on the day I'm traveling down. Um, and then also once I get to, where I'm staying down in Sydney with my fiance's family, um, just need to see what we're going on in terms of um, if I can film there and all that kind of stuff like that. Um, so I might just do a few pre-recorded ones just to kind of cover myself there. But yeah, I'll definitely do or most of the main brands. I'll I'll definitely cover. Um, thanks, man, for always tuning in. I think you've been on everyone. Z Dog, um, Cut Laps. I think you've been the MVPs so far. You've tuned in every everyone i think so thanks for tuning in but yeah as always guys thanks for watching i'll see you tomorrow